Violence in Egypt, meantime, continues for a third day now, with at least 10 killed and hundreds injured. The protesters want power transferred from the military to a civilian authority more urgently, even though elections are underway. Heavy-handed Egyptian soldiers have been caught on camera now, dragging one woman along the pavement by her hair. Let's talk about the latest uh, with Middle East expert and author Tariq Ali, who's in London for us uh, tonight. Hi, Tariq, good to see you. Egypt's Hi. Prime Minister denies the military's using force, despite the images we expect to show our viewers now, and we've got on our website as well, showing soldiers beating protesters, including women. How should he be reacting to what we are seeing, do you think, rather than denying it? Well, uh, it's an old tradition in that country to deny it all. Uh, we are all watching it. The whole of Egypt is watching it. There was one young woman in particular whose blouse had been dragged off. You could see her uh, in, a, in a brazier being dragged by policemen. There are other images coming out of Egypt of soldiers urinating from the rooftop of the parliament building onto demonstrators below. And this really takes one back to the colonial period in uh, Arab history and the history of that region when they were occupied by the British Empire. That is uh, what they were taught to do. And the fact that the military is now turning on its own people uh, under the orders, obviously, of Tantawi and the Egyptian uh, ruling elite uh, is a sign that things are in a very serious, uh, uh, it's, it, it's a serious situation developing in Egypt. And the, soon, the sooner power is transferred to a civilian government, an elected government, the better, whatever that government may be. I mean, no one I, I notice is talking about restraining the Egyptian military, about sanctions on the Egyptian military. The U.S. gives it, uh, uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars each year. Why is there no talk of sanctions on Cairo uh, and yet masses of pressure on Damascus? I mean, there should be some uh, equality uh, as to what is going on here. Tari, while you were talking, you were looking at the uh, earlier on uh, pictures of your shoulder, seeing that uh, lady you were talking about there lying on the floor, also seeing um, you know, people being beaten with sticks. Let's go up to the pictures actually coming live now. Uh, we're told uh, well, one of our camera podiums there is stationed near Tarria Square. It's following closely what's happening. It's difficult to see, Terry, because there, there's obviously it's dark there now, but what you can vividly see is an awful lot of people gathered in the square there. Um, I'm not quite sure if something's on fire there. It's difficult to see. We saw police um, in, the, in the background of the shot there earlier on. Again, you can still, if you f focus very clearly, if you focus in, you can just about see them in the darkness. But it doesn't look like there is any huge uh, violence there tonight, but definitely the protesters are out. I mean, these protests seem to be gaining traction now, Tariq. I mean, will the military's heavy-handedness spark even more unrest like we saw before? Well, if they carry on like this, it will. There is a great deal of unrest, for instance, uh, within the Egyptian working class. And there is unrest in the factories who are threatening to come out on strike in order to push uh, this process uh, further. Um, and it could be argued that the Egyptian military overreacted to the demonstrators to in fact try and deter Egyptian workers from coming out and joining the process. So it's failed. If that was the attempt, it's completely failed. And these disgusting things that are being done uh, to demonstrators in Terry Square and on its fringes are bound to create a great deal of anger. People are now asking in Egypt, so what's changed? We've sacrificed our lives. Several hundred Egyptians died in the process. More are being killed today. So what has changed? Why doesn't this army retire to the barracks and let us get on with running the country? I mean, that's everyone uh, is, is, is saying that. And I think the army is deliberately provoking uh, this anger in order to create the impression that the violence is coming not from them, they're being defensive, and that Egypt really has to be run by the military indefinitely. And if that is their aim, it's not going to work. Well, Tariq, I guess the um, authorities saying, you know, what, asking the question, why is this happening now? Because we have got elections underway, but I guess the protesters trying to make their mark now, again, the flip side of it, trying to make their mark and make as, uh, as big an impression as they can uh, to try and sway votes. and. Uh, I, I, I guess that's the case, yeah? That's the timing of it now. Well, 
It could be that that is the case, but I think generally the protesters are very nervous that their military will put enormous pressure on the Islamist alliance that seems to have won the elections to do a deal, insisting that the new constitution has a strong military component in it. And I think a large section of the Islamist base will resist this. And my own view is that the demonstrators are just making it clear to even the elected par uh, uh, parties, the parties that are dominant, that don't you make, don't, don't you do a deal with the army or we're going to be out on the streets again, including many Islamists. Thanks for your thoughts on the programme. East expert and author Tarek Ali joining us from London. It's appreciated. Thank you.